Okay, welcome back. This is Dave King DDS. Um, for this video, I wanted to give you a little demonstration not only of how to image just a little bit, but also how to go ahead and um, use the uh, the buttons that are on the Cerec machine. Um, I think a lot of us get uh, confused about what the wheel does, what each of these different mouse buttons do, and so I wanted to give you a feel for how I hold my hands and how I use the buttons and what seems to have worked well for me in the past. So here we have the, uh, the, the main screen. I've already got myself pulled up as the patient. I'm going to add a single restoration, crown, biogeneric individual. We're going to use Emacs and I'm going to select tooth number 15. I have a model here. Um, I'm just going to scan the upper. I'll show you a little bit about how I like to scan and the positioning. Um, but we'll go through some just basics and really what I'm trying to focus on right now is hand position and how to hold the camera. So we're going to go ahead and click number 15 and I will hit next. We'll get to the imaging screen. Now it, it should be um, fairly clear to you already that the Cerec machine itself is a pretty expensive little gadget so you want to be very cautious with it. Um, I know that uh, the camera itself is several thousand dollars. Um, I was told once by a lab technician or a repair technician that the uh, camera, the whole camera was about fifteen thousand dollars to replace. Um, so you want to be very cautious with it. Don't drop it. Um, be careful with it. These sleeves here are more than a thousand dollars to replace. Um, so as you can see, you may be able to see here as the lights flashing there's some scratches on that lens right there um, so be cautious when you're not only when you're cleaning it but when you're imaging you don't want to drag the lens across the surface of the tooth so let's go ahead and, and I'll show you how I hold it I hold it just like I hold a handpiece I find that this works really well the weight is resting you know on my uh, my hand here and then when I position it in the patient's mouth let's say for instance this um, is the patient's mouth and I'm right-handed so I'm going to approach from the right side I always want to have a fulcrum so I'll hit the fulcrum right here um, and then I'm going to scan as you can see here usually I, I do one big swath of the occlusal and then I'm going to rotate just a little bit image the prepared tooth rotate around it make sure I get that distal surface of the mesial tooth um, then I want to get the buckle side, go back around the palatal side, and that should be it. Then I'll take a look and make sure I got enough data. Um, if we look over here on the Cerec machine, the image looks pretty clear. And just so you know, when I'm getting started, um, I am going to use... Um, I'm going to be looking first and foremost at the patient's at the patient's mouth to get it positioned right, and then I'm going to be looking right here at the images that are coming up and then the modeling that's populating. So let's talk a little bit about these buttons <clears throat> and how they work. In this screen, uh, remember we have a excuse me a rotate button and a pan button and a zoom. So this is rotate, pan, and zoom, right? So if I'm going to rotate, I'm going to grab and rotate, and it basically rolls around as I'm holding onto that button. If I want to pan, I'm going to press and hold this, and you can see I use my thumb to pan it around. And then the zoom is in the middle. Press and hold again, I use my thumb, and I can zoom in and out to see how I like those images. So you can see how my hands are switching there. I really only use my index finger on my left hand but you can see how I'm using my thumb to get both of these buttons. Some people, you know, do it like this with their ring finger or their middle finger and their first finger on their left hand. This is this is how I was I've developed the most comfort. I just use one finger for my left hand and then my right hand does all the ball movement here, the panning and the zooming. All right, so let's say um, I did not like this image. So I have a couple of choices. Choice number 1, I can take and I can delete this image. Just drag it over to the recycle bin and delete it. Choice number two is I can cut some of the image out. So let's say I want to cut that out. Um, I can right click, 
and you get the toolbar or you can go over here and you can cut as well um, to, to cut just like with any other tool you double click it to start I'm gonna select the area I want to cut out let's just say I wanted to get rid of that area once I'm happy with how it looks then you have to hit apply and I'm still in the cut tool you can see the little hash hash right there so I'm gonna right click and select cut again and now I have my pointer all right so let's go through the imaging one more time. I'm going to drag this over and delete it. And so we have a foot pedal where you lift your foot and it'll turn on the camera. Or you can just click here with your left button. Click that button there. Um, now the camera is active. I'm going to grab my model again and I'm going to pretend again it's in the patient's mouth. Lift up the camera. I'm going to hold it just like a handpiece. Um, then I'm going to grab my fulcrum right here whether it's one or two teeth, usually on the opposite side. Sometimes I'm all the way on the, on the same side, but usually I want to give enough room because I'm going in the patient's mouth. So let it start to image. You can hear the sound I've got is that piano music. And I found that the less you image, the faster the machine goes in processing the restoration, but it also sometimes will give you a less precise image if you don't get enough details. So spend enough time to get good images. So that's about all that I need there. I'm going to turn off the camera, put it back in its little holder, and latch it. Now let's take a look. Okay, so let's say uh, I'm an assistant getting ready for the doctor to come in the room. Um, I want to do all the imaging I can to help make the process a little faster. So I would image the upper arch and then I would cut out the tooth, this tooth right here that we were going to prepare if we had not prepped it yet. So I'm going to turn on my cut tool, which again is up here now if I turn that on. Or I can right click, right click, um, turn on the cut tool, and I can cut out that tooth that we're going to be preparing. And I would always include just a little bit of the adjacent tooth so we get a fresh image of the contact point. All right, now if I like that cut, I can hit apply. If I don't, I can undo it um, and do it again. And apply. Now we have a big void there. Um, remember, your cut tool is still active, so you have to either turn it off there or right click there. All right, so now we have a big void in that. Now, assuming you've done it, uh, done the preparation, now we're going to add those images back in. So let's turn on our camera, either the foot pedal or that left button. I'm going to grab the camera again. Remember, hold it carefully. It's an expensive camera. Um, and then I'm going to grab some common data. And you can see the computer recognize that. That's where it starts to track on the image on the right side. And then I'm going to plug in that common data. Now you want to overlap just a little bit to make sure the computer has enough data to correlate those images together. And get the image and there you go. All right, so let's move forward. Turn that camera off. We're going to move forward. I'll walk you through a couple of those steps that we did in the last video <clears throat> just to make sure that you're comfortable with hand position and what each of these buttons do. Um, in my experience coaching assistants and doctors alike, one of the most awkward things for someone who's just starting CEREC is figuring out how to use the ball and how to use the three buttons um, with regard to what they do and, and how to, to do that. So once it's done um, processing and realize we only took the uh, upper image, we would have taken a lower and a bite in a perfect world. Um, if this is a biocopy, we'd have the biocopy image and the arch for restoring image. So remember, this is a rotate button. This is a zoom button, or yeah, zoom in and out. This is our pan button. In this screen, the, the zoom button does nothing. It doesn't do anything. But we can rotate. And as I said before, you don't want to grab right in the center because it's, it's really hard to control when you grab right at the center of the model when you're using this particular screen. So grab off of the model. It gives you a lot finer control. Um, let's position it first. I'm going to use my pan to pan the image to where I want it to be. I'm looking at the right side now over here. Pan it to where I want it to be. Next, I'm going to go to the bottom. You can go to the top first. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to rotate it a little bit, just a little bit. And then I'm going to pan it up. 
right with that right button I'm using my thumb. Now I'm going to go up here a little bit and I'm going to grab out here and rotate it down just a smidge. And you can see those cusp tips are pretty much in line, but I'm going to rotate it just a little more and then drag it down just a smidge. <clears throat> you can spend hours and hours fine tuning where you want it positioned. Um, for a single restoration, it's not really critical as long as it's in the right quadrant. Um, but you can see here now that we have it positioned right. Um, and we used our pan on the right and our rotate on the left and our zoom button was not effective, not working, not active in this screen. So let's hit OK. This is our new model axis, upper left, single crown, we're going to move forward. And now this is our margin step. So now all of the tools are active now. So let's look at that zoom. Press and hold the middle button and roll up and down, up and down. All right, and you can rotate and you can pan with that right button. All right, so for marginating, remember like we talked about in the last video, you always want to be outside. If you're ever in doubt, always be a little bit outside of the margin. This is difficult to differentiate because this is a model and it's all the same color, so I'm just going to do my best. Double left click to start. Um, you can see the machine is kind of finding that margin. I'm going to put it on manual margin mode. Two ways to do that. I can either see the margin still active. I'm just leaving it there. I can either go over here and click manual or I can use the space bar to, to turn it on manual. I like to use the space bar because I'm lazy. Dragging the mouse over there is too hard for me, I guess. So I'm just going to click the space bar. Now we have a white line um, and I'm going to go ahead and marginate. So single click, single click, single click, single click. If I want to, I can press and hold and now I can rotate the model just like you could rotate with that left button. Um, and if I'm holding, it's not going to activate the margins. So now if I let go, now that margin's still unattached, right? So if I were to press and hold and then rotate, it doesn't grab the model. But if, I'm sorry, press and release and then rotate, it doesn't grab the model. But if you press and hold, it grabs the model so you can move it around, get a better view. All right, so let's go through and select a little bit more. Let's just say I want to zoom in on this area. What am I going to use? I'm going to use that center button, press and hold and zoom in. Now that's as far as it'll zoom in. And let's just say I couldn't see my margin anymore, so I want to pan down. So I'm going to use that right button. And for me, I, I like to use my thumb. Grab, press and hold, and then drag it down. And then you can let go and move it around. So the moment you click it, then it applies the margin. All right. But if you press and hold, it'll grab the model. So let's just follow this margin where we roughly think it is. Um, go all the way around here. And then I'm going to double check that I'm comfortable with where that margin is. This came off just a little bit. This is really hard to see because the colors are not different. Um, it's a lot easier to see prepared enamel or dentin um, against the uh, gingiva. So um, let's just say I really, really like that margin. Um, then I'm going to hit define insertion axis. We've been through this before. I'm going to just glaze through this real fast. Um, now we get to the design phase, so it'll design my restoration. <clears throat> and then I just want to demonstrate one more thing with the buttons, and then we'll end this video. Um, your tool size um, can be changed, and this is way off. I'm not going to spend any time editing this. Um, but your tool size can be changed. So if I hit the right button to turn on my tool wheel or go over here and select a tool, let's just say I select my circular shape tool, I can change the tool size with the right button by pressing and holding and zooming up and down over the, the tooth, the restoration. If I'm over here, I'm going to be panning. If I'm off of the restoration, I'm panning, if that makes any sense. So a right button, increasing the size of the tool, and you can also get to that over here. You can see, now watch the size up and down as I use that right button. Okay, and then if I use the right button off of the model, it's panning. Now the left button is actually going to make changes, right? So as long as I'm on the model or on the restoration, it's going to make changes. The moment I'm off the restoration now, it's going to rotate. Same button. So that's where some of the fine control comes. If you watch a Cyric user who's done it for years, they get really comfortable with editing a little bit, rotating, editing a little, rotate, edit, rotate, pan, 
change the size. You know, we can make all sorts of fun changes here. Anyway, all that being said, hopefully this has been helpful. That's kind of just a demonstration. I wanted to make sure you could see my hands in the video because it's important to be able to see how these buttons are used. Um, if you'll notice, you can take this off. It just unscrews counterclockwise. The ball can be removed, blast it out with some air to clean any particles out of there to make sure it's free moving. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.